How to play the Queen's Gambit. Well, we're going to take a lesson from the legendary Bobby Fischer. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting us via PayPal or Patreon and check out the rewards there. So this game was played at the end of the interzonal tournament in Stockholm in 1962. So the interzonal, that's one of the first steps in the World Championship qualification series. And Fischer won the tournament with an extraordinary score. The margin, he had a two and a half point margin at the end of it. And that was one of the first tournaments where the Soviets realized that he was a serious contender for the world crown. So Fischer had already won the tournament when this game was played. And um, he said afterwards, well, he said in his annotations in my 60 memorable games that, well, he said, yeah, this, this variation is drawish, but I'd already clinched first prize. Well, it's not that drawish because he won this game very smartly. So Queen's Gambit declined. And again, we're seeing this so-called Tartakova variation where the bishop, well, sometimes comes to the long diagonal, let's put it like that. And here, the variation that Bertok played, well, this was popular, yeah, 50 or 60 years ago, but it's kind of been solved by theory, and basically it's not seen as a threat to black any longer. Um, I'll, I'll go into the details of that uh, at the end of the game, for those interested in, in the theory of this. Um, so, bishop e2, very sensible move, and here the bishop comes to e6. In fact, this is the best square for, for the bishop in this particular position, where the centre is now blocked. In fact, the bishop is not best placed on b7, it's better on e6. It has more scope from this square. Castles and now c5. That's an important move. The pawn on b6 supports the pawn on c5. The best move here is knight e5, and after knight d7, well, this position is roughly level um, after that knight exchange. But let's just compare with what happens in the game. So Bertok exchanges here, so we get this typical hanging pawn situation where basically black has control of a lot of central squares here through those pawns and some kind of space advantage. But sometimes those pawns can be a little bit weak. That's where the struggle revolves. Now. Here's the first point where I'd like you to have a little think. How would you play here with black? Black to play. I'll have a slurp, you have a think. Of course, the natural developing move is knight to d7. But Fischer played instead queen b7. And this is an excellent square for the queen. It looks in these directions, down the long diagonal, but also down the b-file as well. And after this, black's strategy just falls into place beautifully. Queen a3, so Bertok defends the b-pawn, but also looks at the c-pawn here, which is covered by, knight, by the knight uh, coming to d7. And here, it's actually very difficult for white to find an active strategy. Black has a really clear plan, which is to attack on the queen side, to advance that a pawn. The rook comes over as well, as, as we'll see. It's a really simple strategy. Um, and it's really not easy for white. So, you know, if you play b pawn to b3, then a5, a4 is going to come to isolate that pawn. It's actually not easy for white at all. Bertok played knight e1 and then a5. 
now knight d3, which provokes this pawn advance. Now, Bertok was hoping after this, which Fischer played, that he'd be able to get pressure on this pawn and maybe use that d4 square, which has now been a little bit weakened. The only problem is that with the pawn on c4, there's just more pressure on that pawn on b2. And after this, well, you can see it's going to be very difficult for white to advance that pawn to b3. Um, already, white has a tough position. In, in his book, Fisher thought that white's best was to take here and to attack that pawn with the bishop. But then rook a6 is still pretty good. And then Fisher thought that the best thing for white to do was simply give up a pawn like this. Um, but obviously that's not a, not a dream position when you're simply losing a pawn. But what Bertok did was worse, which was to play rook b1. He's basically trying to hang on to his pawn. So the rook defends. But now the bishop comes to f5, attacking the rook. The rook switches over. So that pawn is threatened. Fischer defends with knight f6. And then the rook comes up. So in this way, Bertok was hoping to save this pawn. But he'd forgotten about a, a very simple move from Fischer here, which was pawn to g5. And that knight is in real trouble. I mean, it doesn't want to come to this horrible square here. That could be exchanged off just shattering uh, the pawn structure. That's really disgusting. Uh, knight h5 runs into knight e4. And then this move, queen b4. This has been on the cards for quite a few moves, actually. Very nasty for white. It could just be that black exchanges and shatters the pawn structure. This move is also a threat, actually, just undermining the queen's support, pawn to, pawn to c3. And of course, if the queens are exchanged, then these pawns are just tremendous with threat to the a pawn as well. So g5 just undoes white completely and in fact Bertok decided to give up the knight. In fact it's it's not an issue at all. After bishop takes pawn the bishop came back to e6 nice and solid and well this this is it, it's a lost position for white basically. But still, you've got to, got to clear things up. But actually, uh, Rook here is, well, that's the end of the line, as we're going to see. Fisher thought that, that White's best was to take here and play f3. But, well, really, that bishop is such a strong piece. It'll just sit on e6, nice and solid, and then black can exchange pieces. So anyway, Rook d1 played, and now black to play and finish off very Swiftly, knight takes pawn. Mate is threatened here, supported by the knight. And after queen takes, bishop takes bishop. So Fisher has just won another pawn, so now it's very, very easy. So let's just see how things finished off. Queen here, queen e7, supporting the pawn. b3, the bishop came back to that chunky square e6. I can't tell you how often that bishop is so well placed on e6 in the Tartico variation, rather than b7 actually, curiously. Pawn to f4, so Bertok desperately trying to open up the king side, but no, nope, we can keep it closed. Check. And bishop f5 from Fisher. that was the final move of the game you can see. Uh, everything is secure on the king side, and he's just opening up the e file for the rook to perhaps come down to e3 or e2. Black is is completely winning, and Bertok resigned here. So an incredibly smooth game from Fisher, and one very typical of him that strategically he understood the game perfectly. As I repeat, that move queen b7 was the start of a, a very simple queenside 
strategy with a5 and putting pressure on, on the b file. Let's go back to the opening. So typical Tartakova, but this line with c takes d5, really this doesn't offer any difficulties at all. There was a key game in the 1972 World Championship match between Fischer and Spassky. Fischer playing white, which went rook c1, bishop b6 from Spassky, that was correct, and c5. And Fischer actually ended up winning a beautiful game with bishop b5. Let me just take you through a few moves of that. And, well, basically after this key move, knight d4, and then e4, Fischer won a beautiful positional game. But in fact, after bishop b5, well, Geller showed how black should play. And once again, it's that move queen b7. Um, I'd love to show you that game another time, actually. But queen b7 is a key move, actually, which just, um, well, it, it at least equalizes for black in this position. With similar ideas to, to uh, Fischer, actually. So, yeah. Uh, while this line here was, well, you could say one of the main lines 50, 60 years ago, actually from the early 70s on, it declined in popularity because basically black should be fine in this position. Okay, more Queen's Gambit games coming your way soon. Um, my big difficulty actually is that there are so many great games that I want to show you. Um, it's difficult to make a selection, but anyway, I hope you're enjoying them. Thanks for watching.